And when I think about the past, he and I look at the present, and I think about how many of them died and gave their life for us to be able to help and support other people now in the present. Maybe in some way we will learn that when we put people first, that is when real change happens. Because every day, Project Angel Food puts people who need the help first. And I promise you this is not a plug because we're in the middle of a strike and I'm not out to say it. But if you've seen the show The Bear, there's an episode, not mine. <laughs> but the next one, it's called Forks. And it's an episode about service. And it really has to do with somebody showing up thinking they're all that and then being told they had to polish forks. And over the course of a beautifully written episode and a beautiful monologue delivered about service and hospitality and what it means, he understands that the guy polishing the forks is as important to the mission as the guy making the meal. And that's what Project Angel Food is. It is not just about the chefs. It is not just about the leadership. It is not just about our founders. It is about every one of these volunteers, people who pack and deliver for no glamour, no, nobody's gonna know they did it. So it began at a time of suffering and the response was so powerful and important. But the people who need Project Angel Food today are not just people who were afflicted by a disease. They are afflicted by the social and economic and political conditions in the United States of America. And they haven't made it into the club. And we here have made it into the club. And of course, in the club, it's the greatest country in the world. Not enough people can get into the club. And the way America works should not be that there will be just be enough Project Angel Foods to compensate for the heartlessness and the lack of conscience at the way we, at the way we currently organize our society. Hi, Cheryl. Great to see you. All right. It's a big organization with a simple mission. Feed people. Educate people, but feed them. First and foremost, give them nutritionally sound, dietarily custom-made for them meals. And then from that, the bigger issues of food production are for the scientists and the board members to really expand. But the primary mission here, the reason we're here, is feed people. It saved me from radical surgery um, when I was, what, 22, 23 years old? And, uh, you don't forget that. And uh, when I met with the Project Angel Food people last December, and they did, they talked about expanding the service, you know, the, the organization. What grabbed my attention was food is medicine. That, that, I get that. When I heard that, I, I said, well, that's it. I want to be part of this. I want other people to have the same you know, opportunity that I had. I was very lucky. 85 million people in the United States are either uninsured or underinsured, which is why so many of these people are sick. If we had universal health care, it wouldn't be the case. Same with the fact that 18 million Americans cannot afford to fulfill their prescriptions that their doctors give them. Once again, why so many of them are sick. 
We have the highest poverty rate in any industrialized nation, once again. So what I saw, having started as a nonprofit activist, such as founding Project Angel Food, which is private charities should be here to address screaming emergencies. There's always an appropriate place for them. But we're now asking private charities to compensate for the fact that the society itself is not addressing the deeper needs of the majority of its people. That was true when I ran in 2020, and in a certain way it's even more true in 2024. So the message I gave them is still relevant and still needed, and I'm out there to say these things because, as is clear on a day like today, the suffering and the unnecessary suffering in the society is absolutely enormous.